I wholeheartedly believe the weirdest thing I talk about on my channel is the trans kids topic because it boils down to a bunch of grown adults trying to convince children in any way that they are transgender from somebody saying that if you refuse a haircut or if you stand to take a piss that's an indication that you're probably a transgender. We have parents who tell us that their kids they knew from the minute they were born practically and actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, or trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate. To all these social media activists getting on all these different platforms and trying to let children know that they can seek a doctor without parental supervision. I'm gonna try to make this short. If you have teenage kids in Washington State, watch this video. I get a call today from the counselor at the high school, Snohomish, Washington. They proceed to say, your child, 15 years old, did not pick up his antidepressants um, at the end of the school year. I said, he, he's not on antidepressants. Like, what are you talking about? My kid is not depressed. I got that in my teeth. Forget it. And they proceed to tell me that they had a psychiatrist come to the school and give my kid antidepressants. And he's been on them for several months. I had no knowledge. I knew nothing about it. Knew nothing. Come to find out, it's 100% legal. They could do whatever they want with our kids in Washington State in the school program. Number one, if they're giving a child prescription in your home, you should know, period. Number two, the only time I could see them keeping stuff like that from you if they be is if they believe that there's abuse in the home, sexual abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, any type of abuse, or if they feel the child's at danger, 100%, I would agree with them not telling me. Number three, what if I was allowing him to have a glass of wine at home? at dinner. Not that I am, but what if I was? What if he had a heart murmur? What if he was allergic to medications like that? The kid can barely fill out a job application. How's he gonna know all his medical history? How's he gonna know all these things? Number three, he didn't tell me because I had a really good line of communication with the school. I got the receipts. We were emailing every week because he's on an IEP. I was talking to his case manager. He thought 100% I knew. And number four, it's not their kid to give a prescription to. So I wholeheartedly believe that they should have told me let these teachers come in and act as if they have nothing wrong they've done nothing wrong a mistake how long of a mistake how many mistakes are we going to take before my child almost lost her life they didn't tell me that my child was suicidal you allowed these teachers to open their classrooms teaching predatorial information to a young child a mindful child that doesn't even know how to comprehend it all how do you not know what was going on on your own campuses? Did you think that no parent would ever come forward? You will not quiet me today. I will stand here today and protect my child along with every other child who has not come forward yet. Do you, do you, do they have psychiatry degrees that I was unaware of? Because I didn't hire them, okay? I did not hire them to sit there and nitpick my child's brain. You took away my ability to parent my child. Even before I had any knowledge, I didn't even get to show support. You asked for support, I didn't get a chance. You planted seeds, Ms. Caldera and Ms. Baraki, Mr. Baraki and you, Ms. Kagarin. Your job was to educate my child in math, science, English, etc. Do your job and let me do mine. They assumed, they assumed that my child needed your aid and resources. They pushed it in the face. And tonight, I will stick up for her. Miss Caldera, you're guilty. Miss Baraki, you're guilty. You changed her personal documentation, her gender, her name, her email. I authorized an AKA added to her attendance because I wanted to be supportive. But guess what? She's allergic to bees. Her medical record says a birth name and you changed it. Who administers that now? Not everything, not me. You guys did this on your own accountability and you've gone too far. They downgraded me in front of my child and allowed me to question myself as a mother. You sat there and told me how my child was going to be. And then you wrapped your hands around her while I sat across the table and cried. Because you thought you could be there better than I and I never got a chance. She was scared to even say anything. Your guys' voice were heard, not hers.
and the most jarring somebody getting in trouble over the past three weeks for trying to promote themselves as somebody who's going to give away prescribed medication to people that it wasn't prescribed for whenever the conversation is broadcast on social media it's put in a light that makes it seem like it's a hundred percent positive there's no consequence there's no talk about the negative aspects it's only bringing up the positivity and the only thing that could even come close to being a negative is dealing with a bunch of people calling you some transphobic slurs and how they're a bunch of bigots online there's no mention of how these procedures could affect someone later down the line there's no statements with millions or even thousands of views on instagram twitter tiktok snapchat of somebody detailing you may feel like this now but later down the line it may just be something you forget about there's not really anything popular about people detransitioning yes statistically it isn't as prominent but you would still have to bring that up when you're talking to people about transitioning because it could just be a moment in time where you think like that and as you grow older you never think about it again people change their minds about things all the time from the clothes to wear to the food to eat to the places to go and if you think a child growing up in life wouldn't change their mind about the things that they are or the things they want to do you're willingly ignoring the fact that people have to develop in life in order to grow and see the world for what it is for the duration of this video i'm going to be reading an article that further proves my point that you can push this on kids all you want eventually they're going to get older and some of them might stick it out and say yes this is how i truly am and this is how i truly feel which is fine as long as you have gone through life and you've had experience and you know this is who you are and this is who you want to be but there's always going to be that person in the room that got peer pressured into this that got told this is who they are that got told this is what they should do and then later down the line they end up regretting it an australian woman who transitioned to male before realizing it was a mistake is suing a psychiatrist after he approved her female to male hormone treatment following a single meeting and later signed off on two surgeries to remove her breast and uterus jay langandinos now 31 was just 19 when she first met dr patrick tuhe a veteran sydney psychiatrist in may of 2010 the teen was referred to him by her endocrinologist to determine if she was suitable for a gender transition the specialist wrote that langandinos was very young and needed a thorough psychiatric workup before embarking on hormone treatment after his first meeting with the teen tuhe concluded that langandinos suffered from gender dysphoria and was fit for testosterone therapy the next time langandinos had an appointment with tuhe in february of 2012 she told him she was eager to undergo top surgery to have her breast surgically removed as part of her transition tuhe approved of the double mastectomy for his patient who underwent the procedure in april of that year a month later langandinos met with tuhe for the third and final time to discuss having her uterus removed according to the lawsuit tuhe wrote that he could not find no psychiatric contradiction to preceding the hysterectomy as part of the gender transition clearing the way for langandinos then 22 to undergo surgery in november now nearly a decade later langandinos who no longer identifies as male is suing tuhe for professional negligence claiming that he greenlit her hormone therapy even after she told him she suffered from social phobia she also alleges that he was negligent in not recommending she get a second opinion ahead of her hysterectomy court filing states that tuhe strongly recommended that langandinos seek social and family therapy but she did not heed that recommendation despite that he went ahead and signed off on her two surgeries langandino says that in 2016 four years after her hysterectomy she was receiving psychiatric treatment from another doctor when she came to the realization that she should not have undergone the hormone therapy or the first or second surgeries in 2020 langandino's consulted an endocrinologist about stopping her testosterone treatment in the documents langandino's argues that tuhe should have realized she might be autistic and referred her for further treatment she also contends that her social phobia should have been treated before she was ever prescribed hormone therapy langandino says in her statement of claim that the hormones and surgeries left her suffering from injuries disabilities and complications including early menopause anxiety and depression impaired psychological functioning and diminished capacity for employment in an interview with the australian news outlet the age and the sydney morning herald the 31 year old said knowing that i can't have children is absolutely devastating langandino explained that growing up she felt she was 
somehow defective because she realized she was attracted to girls. At 17, she went online to read more about gender dysphoria. I thought, that's what I have. I decided I must be transgender because of my discomfort that I had in my body. Langandano said as she became progressively unhappy, she decided that the source of her distress was that she was not a man, so the answer was to change my body even more. During her and Tuhei's initial meeting, the psychiatrist reported that she had been distressed when made to dress as a girl in elementary school, had a tomboy manner, was socially isolated, and left school at age 11. In a letter to an andrology fellow, Tuhei allegedly said that when he first saw Langondinos, he had noted a past history of significant social phobia and depression which may have been beyond gender dysphoria. Two things need to be hammered home before I end this video. Number one, I don't think this psychiatrist is losing this lawsuit. He recommended therapy. He detailed that this person had some social phobia and depression. This person chose to not take the recommendations and was too eager to have top surgery. And number two, it's important that everybody understands this. In this world of all this positivity, there are negatives that exist. In a world where people think they're sure of themselves, there are people who are uncertain about life as a whole. You go through life thinking one thing and as you grow older you're gonna end up thinking something else you think the decision you're making right now is the best one and then later down the line you come to regret it or a better opportunity comes along with it you can't sit here and say everybody who makes that transition is going to be 100 happy you can't be giving people prescription medication that they didn't get from a doctor and think this is the avenue that's perfect for everybody people go through life making choices making decisions and then they end up regretting them. And this person, who was too eager to listen, regretted a decision that they made over the past number of years. And that's their own problem that they have to deal with in the future. And if she wins the lawsuit, perfect. But she's going to have to deal with the realization with being too eager to understand that in life, you go through things, you think about situations, and either they become reality or they're just a phase that you went through as a teenager or a kid. And that's the point people need to explain when it comes to telling kids about transition. You think like this now, later down the line, you might change your mind. And if you stick with that thought and you live that thought and that's what you choose to be, it's perfectly fine. But you shouldn't be as a grown adult pushing this on children like it's a definitive conclusion. And if you do, your lack of comprehension to thought and change in a person's life is astronomical. And that's the real fucking problem. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye.